Good morning. Um, I'd like to introduce the people who are at the table this morning, starting with, to my right, Rosanna Rosado, who is the Secretary of State, and will be in Puerto Rico Sunday, uh, on Sunday for several hours with me, two hours. Donna Lieberman, uh, who is the Outstanding Executive Director of the NYCLU. It's a pleasure to have her. Alina Das, uh, from the, who is a professor at uh, NYU School of Law. Uh, to my right, Gonzalo Mercado is the Executive Director Director of uh, La Comena, Alfonso David, my esteemed counsel. Uh, Mr. Collins, we want to thank him for coming down from Rome, New York. Uh, for those of you who don't know, is upstate New York, uh, who is the owner of Collins Farm. Jeff True, who is the owner of True Farms. Uh, and Richard Ball, who is the commissioner of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, today's topic is the alarming increase in the rate of arrests and actions by the immigration and customs officials, so-called ICE, and the manner in which they are performing these arrests. Uh, we have serious concerns that their operation, number one, violates citizens' constitutional rights, Number two, violates the rights of undocumented people. Uh, and number three, actually endangers public safety, the way they're carrying out these operations and these arrests. Uh, recent weeks, we've seen an increase and a harshness uh, in their behavior, and behavior that I believe actually endangers the public safety. Uh, so that's the topic that we want to address. To give you a sense of some of the recent events that we've experienced in New York from one end to the other. This is a situation that occurs in Staten Island. It occurs in Suffolk. It occurs in western New York. Uh, it's a major problem on the farms in New York that have been targeted by ICE. Uh, so it is a statewide issue. Uh, downstate, upstate, urban, and rural. Uh, but to give you a, a flavor of some of the incidents that have been occurring, we're first going to hear from John Collins, who is, as I mentioned, is the owner of Collins Farm in uh, Rome, New, New York. Then Gonzalo Mercado, who will speak to us about developments on Staten Island. And then Alina Das, uh, who will speak to us about several issues in downstate New York. Uh, first, Mr. John Collins, and we want to thank him for taking that long ride to the big city. Mr. Collins. Um, I want to thank um, Governor Cuomo um, for shedding some light on this subject, number one. Um, I want to thank him for all, all that he's doing for the farming community and to protect um, New York values. Um, as many of you know, last week armed officers of Immigration and Customs Enforcement raided my dairy farm in Rome, New York. They aggressively seized a worker on my farm, and they did so in the view of their children. This man is an incredible hard worker who plays an important role on our farm. The federal authorities had no reason to take, take him from my farm and from his family. This experience has left me deeply concerned with the outreach and aggressive tactics used by ICE. Our officers showed no respect for me, my employees, or the rule of law. They did, they did this without a warrant after they entered my property. They did not identify themselves. And when I pulled my phone out to document this aggressive situ situation, the officers grabbed my phone, threw it to the side, and put me in handcuffs and threatened to arrest me. As an employer, I'm responsible for protecting the people that are working on my farm. When the federal government comes to my property, they must have a warrant, and they must treat my property and my people on my farm with respect. Neither happened here. We cannot, cannot allow these illegal raids to continue. The sad truth is this experience of this worker and the one is one of many. Too many families are being broken up. Too many businesses are being put at risk because of ICE's reckless and unnecessary relate raids. 
so today I'm proud to join Governor Cuomo to speak out against this unjust stand for my employees and for the rule of law of New York State. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Mr. Mercado, thank you for being here. Thank you, Governor. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Mercado, Executive Director of La Colmena. We work in Staten Island. Uh, we work with a lot of the immigrant community living and working uh, on the island, uh, and we have seen a uh, spike of rates, uh, uh, which is inflicting fear in the community. Uh, a couple of the last arrests that we came in contact with when we talked to the families, uh, in one case, the latest case, was a grandmother walking out of her house to take her child to school uh, when she saw immigration officers around looking for a person who lived there about a year ago. Uh, and even though the person did not live there, they still went in there and arrested five people. Uh, these are some of the cases that we're seeing and they're very worried about. Uh, this is not just affecting, you know, local uh, neighborhoods, but uh, entire communities. Uh, that then at the next day, uh, in some cases, the, the kids don't even go to school because they don't know what's happening with their parents. Uh, we uh, continue to work uh, to make sure that we find solutions uh, to these situations. We, we continue to work uh, to make sure that uh, families uh, can eliminate the, uh, uh, the fear from these communities, bringing information, bringing attorneys, and bringing people in the community, regular citizens that are coming together to help us allies and support. Uh, and we want to uh, continue to work with the governor in all of the uh, initiatives uh, that you know he's uh, thinking of right now to make sure that we diminish the effect of ICE in our communities. Uh, uh, we want to uh, also bring up the issues uh, that are happening uh, uh, every time they happen uh, uh, to your attention to make sure that we can analyze uh, all these cases uh, and really create a plan of action that can be replicated maybe in other parts of the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mercado. Uh, Ms. Alina Das. Thank you, Governor. Uh, my name is Alina Das. I am a professor and the co-director of the Immigrant Rights Clinic <coughs> excuse me, at NYU School of Law. Um, I am grateful to be here uh, with the governor and with others here at the table to draw the public's attention to some of the more outrageous tactics that ICE is using these days. We have seen under the Trump administration a huge increase in the number of immigration arrests. And the tactics, as you've heard, have become increasingly aggressive. One of the many uh, constitutional violations that we are increasingly seeing from the Trump administration is the targeting of people who speak out. Um, we have seen immigrants who, uh, because they uh, criticize ICE and they stand up for others who are facing some of these tactics, they suddenly are becoming the first targets for deportation. Now, ICE is claiming that these are people who are public safety threats. ICE is trying to own this public safety rhetoric. But the truth is that these are immigrants who are doing everything that they've been asked to do, who check in with ICE regularly, who, who try and follow the rules that are given to them, even though the, the immigration laws of this country are so broken. Um, these are immigrants who are, who are good members of our community who are working very hard to be with us. Um, the only threat that they pose by speaking out is to threaten Trump's deportation machine. Now, I have seen this firsthand. I represent Ravi Ragbir. He is a New Yorker and the executive director of the New Sanctuary Coalition, a faith-based organization that works hard to advocate for immigrant rights. He was targeted under this administration for deportation based on his activism. Now, we know we, that we can marshal our resources to try and stop these unlawful practices, and we are working hard to fight the deportation of Mr. Rogbier. But we also know that these tactics are creating widespread fear, that people are afraid to speak out, that ICE is trying to use these tactics to silent dissent. And that is what is so dangerous about what ICE is doing today. Unchecked, they are threatening one of the basic core values of this country, our First Amendment speech. Uh, the ability to speak out, no matter who you are, no matter the color of your skin, your beliefs, that you can speak your truth and not be targeted for deportation. Now, ICE is claiming with all of these cases that they're simply upholding the rule of law. Well, the highest law in this country is the Constitution. And if ICE is not upholding the Constitution, our entire country and everything it stands for begins to fall apart. In the words of a federal judge, to paraphrase recently in Mr. Rogbier's case, it is setting us down a path where we become one of those authoritarian regimes whose practices we revile. 
So I am glad to be here um, with my colleagues, with people who have spoken out in public against these practices and with Governor Cuomo, uh, to call ICE out for its tactics and to start to put us on a path where we recognize that the immigrants that are being targeted are part of the public. They are our public. So when we talk about public safety, we have to protect everyone. And we can't let ICE divide our community into deserving and undeserving. We all deserve to have our constitutional rights be protected. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very well said, Professor. I'm going to refer to you as Professor from now. <laughs> uh, the, um, as you hear from these situations, our first concern is uh, that these are illegal violations. These are unconstitutional uh, activities that ICE is undertaking. Mr. Collins is a private owner who owned the farm uh, whose constitutional rights were violated. Uh, when you destroyed his property, uh, personal property, when you put him in handcuffs, uh, you violated his constitutional rights. ICE going on to the farm without a valid warrant violated constitutional rights. Uh, they violated the constitutional rights uh, of American citizens uh, every time they enter property without a valid warrant. Uh, we also believe that ICE is endangering the public safety by not notifying local law enforcement and state law enforcement. If Mr. Collins had picked up the telephone and called the state police and said there are eight un unidentified men who just walked onto my farm armed and the state police responded to that and had no prior notice that ICE was doing anything, that could be a very dangerous situation very quickly. If somebody calls from a home on Staten Island and says there's four men outside with no identification, doesn't say anything on their jacket, uh, and they have guns and they're approaching the house, the NYPD would respond and you could have a potentially dangerous situation. Uh, why wouldn't you notify local and state police before you take an action? That that en endangers public safety. And third, you need a warrant. You need a valid court issued warrant before you take action. Uh, that is a fundamental constitutional provision. So we believe ICE is violating the law and endangering public safety in all of those instances. And we're going to put them on notice today that if they continue, the state will sue them, period. Because the state has the responsibility for upholding the constitutional rights of the people who live in New York. And as governor, my job is to protect New Yorkers. And I am going to do that, and we will take action because we believe ICE is acting beyond the law. We are also uh, going to work on a rapid response team from the state so that when the uh, ICE approached Mr. Collins' farm or a home in Staten Island, uh, we should be able to get a, a legal counsel there as quickly as possible. And an informed legal counsel who knows these issues, who knows what a warrant should state, who knows the rights of undocumented people, et cetera. We just passed the budget uh, in the state that has $10 million additional for what we call our Liberty Defense Project which provides counsel in situations such as this, and we are going to work with the relevant advocacy and, and legal assistance organizations in, in coming up with a statewide network that would provide a rapid response. But we're going to put ICE on notice today uh, on all of those issues. The uh, violation of constitutional rights of New Yorkers, legal citizens. Mr. Collins is an owner of a farm. He's a legal U.S. citizen. They violated his rights. Violation of the rights of undocumented people, endangering the public safety the way they are doing these raids, uh, undisclosed in the middle of the night without coordinating or notifying local uh, or state law enforcement, 
Uh, and third, uh, using the funding we just received in the budget to put together a network so we have legal counsel that is available. That is all uh, a legal issue, and I think it's clear cut, and I think it's time a state stood up twice and made this case uh, and let them know that uh, people have rights. I understand the power of the federal government. I was in the federal government for eight years. Uh, but I also understand the Constitution of the United States. And it doesn't say the federal government can come in and do whatever it wants whenever it pleases. That's a matter, as a matter of law. I believe what is happening is that this is about politics. Uh, we have a president who in the campaign campaigned on an anti-immigrant agenda. Uh, they were the problem, illegal immigrants were the problem for the middle class, they are creating all these economic woes, we have to deport people. That was the president's rhetoric. We need to build a wall. The president still talks about building the wall. We deport all the uh, illegal immigrants and then we put up a wall and America will be great again. Uh, that was the fantasy they sold in the campaign. That has been his agenda as president, the Muslim country ban, uh, DACA citizens, DACA young people being held hostage, right? He's been very consistent in this anti-immigrant theme. I think ICE has responded to this heated political rhetoric with hostile actions. And I think they're literally feeding off the president's uh, hot rhetoric their problem is there's supposed to be a law enforcement agency, which would suggest that they would actually be following the law in the process. New York is the antithesis, antithesis of what this president believes about immigration. And I've said this from day one. He wants to talk about being anti-immigrant. We're New Yorkers by definition. We are pro-immigrant. Uh, we are immigrants, right? If you're not a Native American, Everybody else is an immigrant. And how can you now turn around and say, well, I'm anti-immigration, when that's who you are and how you got here, right? Because all of our uh, predecessors at one point or another were immigrants. Uh, and New York has the exact opposite philosophy. We embrace immigration. We embrace diversity. We think it makes us, us stronger. We think it's an asset for the economy. We think it it brings in new ideas and new energy, and it keeps renewing New York. And that constant stream of immigration has actually propelled us through the success that we've had. That's what we believe. It is the exact opposite of the federal philosophy. And we've been doing that from day one. We started with the Office of New Americans. Uh, when I first became governor, we have executive orders providing translation services. We have the Liberty Defense Project because we believe in immigration. We believe in educating and including and incorporating people into this society. Uh, so I understand the president philosophically is opposed to what we believe in New York. Uh, but I also believe the president is wrong. I believe he is wrong in his policy. I believe that's not what America is all about because immigration is not just the New York story, it is the American story. Uh, I believe his heated rhetoric is now driving abusive practices like the abusive practices we see at ICE. I, see they I think they violate the law and I think it's our responsibility as a state government in New York to stand up and make that case. And that's what we're going to do. Any questions on this topic? We're going to first take on topic questions, and then we'll allow our other participants to depart, and then we'll continue with off topic. Why not just sue now, Mr. Governor? Sure. Why, why wait? Why wait? Well, I want to see what ICE's response is. Uh, I think it's clear cut. Uh, number one, the law is clear cut that you need a valid warrant to enter private property. Uh, you need that authorization. Uh, 
uh, and they don't have that in many, many cases. They don't present it. I think the way they do it is at times reckless and endangers public safety. I think coming on to private property unidentified with armed people uh, creates uh, all sorts of possibility of chaos and danger, uh, and there's no reason why they can't notify the local police and the state police, uh, just as a matter of basic coordination. Uh, so we're going to send the letter uh, today. I want to see what ICE's response is, uh, and if it's not satisfactory, then I have no problem commencing suit because I believe these are blatant constitutional violations. Uh, my name is Fabio Ramirez, I'm, I'm the executive director of El Centro del Inmigrante, an immigrant organization on Southern Ireland. I don't know if you are aware, but yesterday afternoon, an undocumented immigrant was arrested inside a state supreme court. And that is something that is uh, very shocking for us. It's the first time that we register an undocumented immigrant arrested inside a state supreme court. And uh, we think that the courthouses should be a safe place to go, and actually he was, this, this person has a misdemeanor that was dismissed just before he was arrested by, by ICE. I, I just want to flag that and, and that you can have that in your uh, consideration. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. Mr. Mercado uh, discussed that with right, us yes. when, when we had a meeting before, yes, but Mr. Mercado yeah. mentioned that situation uh, at a meeting that we had before we came down. Uh, I'll also be executing an executive order that says ICE cannot enter a state facility or a state building without a valid uh, judicial warrant, uh, which would, I believe, address the situation you just mentioned. Thank you. Any other Any questions from the person? Uh, my question is to Ms. Doss. Uh, as a result of that incident yesterday, a number of legal aid attorneys <coughs> walked out and held a protest uh, as a result of that. Is that the sort of speaking out that you referred to? Well, absolutely. I think what we've seen um, in New York from its citizenry is an incredible outpouring of support of immigrants. So whether it's legal aid attorneys protesting and community organizations protesting what we're seeing in our court system, um, people in faith communities really standing up uh, for the values of kind of sanctuary principles um, when people like uh, Ruby Rugbeer and Jean Montreville uh, were taken by ICE. That's exactly the kind of exercise of our First Amendment rights we need to protect. But immigrants themselves are the ones who are most vulnerable. And so they should be able to speak out and to lead us um, in, in this fight uh, without fear of being deported. And so I think we have to encourage everyone to have that sense of safety. And steps like these are an important important uh, way of, of signaling to ICE that we're not going to tolerate um, bullying tactics, any, tr any attempts to try and intimidate us. Yeah. And look, let's be honest. We, we hear all the time on the national news uh, accusations of politicizing law enforcement agencies, right? Uh, I believe ICE has been politicized, if not directly, indirectly that their aggressive tactics, aggressive behavior, unconstitutional, illegal behavior, is being fueled by the political rhetoric of the administration. I don't believe uh, those two things are disconnected. The number of incidences are higher. Their behavior is much more aggressive than it has been in the past. Uh, and that when you politicize law enforcement, now you are in a very bad place, and now you are over the line. And whether that happens directly because they were told, or indirectly because they believe they're following the spirit and the tone of the federal administration, that is a frightening place. And that is un-American. That is un-American, right? Immigration is a controversial topic. Mr. Collins, is an American citizen, he owns a farm, he's conducting a business. He winds up handcuffed and has his personal property destroyed because he wanted to film what the police were doing. That violates every American concept that we all hold dear. 
And I think that's what you're seeing with ICE in general. And it's frightening and it has to stop. Fourteen some odd months into the Trump administration, we've been hearing a lot of these complaints for at least six months, if not more. Is this letter, outgoing letter, really the first communication of of any magnitude with ICE between your administration and, and ICE? Uh, this is the first formal communication we have had. Yes, this has been an escalating situation. I think you're right that in general the anti-immigration agenda started very early on. As I mentioned, it started with the Muslim ban, uh, the, the DACA situation uh, um, evolved uh, second. Uh, the ICE, increased ICE activity has been ramping up, but I think it has been progressively worse and worse and worse. And I think over the past couple of weeks, we've seen the most aggressive behavior we've seen. And that's what's prompting our action today. Uh, Governor, talk a little bit about these, this uptick in arrests, you know, after the six-day ICE operation that netted 225 people. The feds came back and said, you know, because of the refusal for local law enforcement to cooperate in these arrests, that this is only increasing the amount of people arrested uh, who pose no public threat to safety. Um, uh, public safety threat. What do you say to that? They're pretty much saying that, you know, the feds are saying, look, local law enforcement's refusal to help us is actually making the situation worse. Yeah. I don't understand any possible logic to what they said. Uh, yes, our local law enforcement, our state police, are not in the immigration enforcement business. I don't agree with them, with the federal government philosophically. I don't agree with them legally. I don't agree with them as an economic matter. I don't believe, uh, agree with them as a social matter. Uh, so yes, we are not enforcing the immigration laws. Uh, that's the responsibility of the federal government. To the, uh, but what connection does that have to why they would be increasing the number of arrests and violating constitutional rights and trampling people's personal property. I have, I, there's just no logic to me. It's not the first time there's been actions from the federal government that have no logic to me. So there is consistency, if not logic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Pleasure.